Well, that's it. Mambo Rap is dead. You killed it. You murdered and absolutely destroyed it. You have women, views, likes, critical acclaim. So what do you do next? Kill it again. Just straight up disrespect it and kick the corpse until it reminds you of your own career. Except this time you do it with Lil Xan. Hi everyone. Riptony of Tano here, the internet's cringiest music nerd. And today we're taking a look at how not to respond to your critics after you've done something really dumb. And I know I'm about two weeks too late for this. Yeah, more like two fucking months. But I've been kind of busy with online classes, various other projects, and setting this thing up. Not to mention this song dropped on my birthday along with some other music that I would much rather listen to than some pissed off boomer YouTube rapper. <laughs> Mego Maja, akurat w mojej urodziny. Zawsze mi mówili, że jestem wyjątkowym dzieckiem, ale chyba nie o to chodziło. The music video opens with a really bad skit. Get the f out of my studio. Gone goes so deep into the rabbit hole, he literally becomes Eminem after a year of quarantine. Like, I get it, you're trying to be self-aware, but being self-aware just for the sake of being self-aware doesn't really make you funny. The opening lines are, leave me alone, which makes absolutely no sense at all. I think he's addressing everyone and their mother criticizing him and making fun of him, but it's his fault for making a terrible and blatantly hypocritical song, plus doing the same thing again won't help at all. And the beat is even less interesting this time. It's just a blatant mask of ripoff. Beat brzmi jak mask of tak samo jak Gon wygląda jak Eminem. <laughs> just look at this guy. I get that he's trying to be over the top, but this is just too desperate of an attempt at humor. Blonde hair, okay, that's slim shady. But why the sweatband? And these sunglasses? How do you do, fellow kids? I'm not even going to comment on the t-shirt and shorts because I don't want an airstrike coming my way. The lines are even more stupid and off-topic than the first one. Sex jokes, racist jokes, plays on mumble rapper's names. And you just couldn't stop yourself from including Allegra Cole? Why did you do this? Her presence in the video has no purpose other than to include one more person who has more followers than you. Also you can see that she's not doing much in the video, she's just awkwardly standing there while these two are doing whatever the fuck they're doing. It's not even self-aware at this point. On top of the slightly racist lines, Gon is wearing his MAGA hat with America replaced with rap, another boomer stereotype. I don't even think I'm going to ignore this cheap attempt at promoting someone's OnlyFans. OnlyFans. <laughs> and the hook might just be the worst part lyrically. He's insulting a woman because she posts pictures with no clothes and he calls her a hoe. I know it's pretty hard to understand but it's 2020, not 1300. I think women can do whatever they want with their bodies. Nobody cares about the opinion of a butthurt YouTube rapper. That's another boomer stereotype. Not to mention it doesn't mean anything at all in this song. Why is this even here? And Leave Me Alone is probably what you should say when Luke randomly starts whining to you about something. Lil Xan's verse, at least the first part, unironically sounds pretty fun, at least compared to at least compared to Gon's dead flow, but it's still empty and off topic. It's almost as if this verse was ghostwritten by Gon, who listened to some mumbo rap and tried to copy it. Gon's also wearing a Mac Lethal socks hat, which on one side is a pretty cool reference, but on the other, again, it makes no sense. She said that her name Michelle. I said, then call me Obama. Or you can say daddy as well, because I'm in the crib with your mama. She's 55, but I'm 24. I think I'm a giver the mamba. And you know what the best part is? Around the end of the verse, Gon makes some actually kind of agreeable points about Xanax, but obviously he had to end it with a stupid line about mumble rap being his bible. The weird flow, even though it sounds a bit better and kind of dying voice, just make it even worse. And I don't know if you noticed, but Eminem, yes, 
Eminem. The person you stand the most might just be the biggest rapper ever to have a serious issue with pills. Also, this was filmed during the lockdown. You can clearly see they're not wearing masks or gloves. These two girls are the only ones who somewhat follow social distancing rules. And he made two fucking albums about it. And the fucking cover art. Okay, it's a bit better, but it's still total garbage. I just can't take this anymore. Naciskasz przycisk, masz coś, ale pod tym warunkiem. Możesz mieć przyjaciela, ale twoim przyjacielem jest Lil Zan. Nigdy bym go kurwa nie nacisnął. I ja, ja pierdolę, przyznawanie się, że wyglądasz jak Marshall Mathers, który zapomniał o fryzjerze i e, postanowił, że wejdzie w inną kurwa linię czasoprzestrzenną i zmieni się w mobil rapera, to nie jest ten kierunek. Directed by Cold Bennett. Zawsze Cold Bennett wrzuca, że on to po prostu robił, tak jest dokładnie tutaj to samo. Ja bym się do tego kurwa nie przyznał. <laughs> so the idea is that Gone, for some reason, has a change of heart, takes some Xanax, and essentially becomes a mumble rapper. But not only is this just straight up not funny, as a lot of people actually died from overdose, he doesn't even stick to the plot. I guess he's just too good to even imitate bad rappers. Me alone. <laughs> Some of you might think I hate lyrical rap, that's just a stupid claim. There are modern rappers who focus on lyrical skill that I listen to a lot, like Denzel Curry, Joey Banas, Kendrick fucking Lamar. The difference between the artists I just mentioned and these lyrical miracles is that their music has actual substance and meaning to it that goes deeper than fuck the new kids. I can rhyme more than two words. For those of you who don't know, lyrical miracle is a phrase that has become kind of a meme. It means a rapper who sacrifices substance and meaning for impressive sounding rhyme schemes and fast rapping. You can't just go on rhymezone.com, type in a random word and pick 16 words that just happen to rhyme with it. One of my favorite rap songs of all time is Stay Wide Awake by Eminem. It not only has one of the sickest rhyme schemes he's ever pulled off, he's also telling a story. So all lyrical miracles who consider Eminem to be the biggest influence, instead of carefully analyzing his lyrics, they just go with the easy route and copy rhyme patterns. <laughs> Uh, so that's all I had to say on this topic. Uh, you can visit me on Instagram if you want to drop a diss track on me. I'm kind of disappointed that nobody uh, did so after the previous video. But... Mm. And no, I'm not completely dead musically. I might just make something... in the near future. Hashtag death to call new rap.